Oh, this pastor has so 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 and so. If you see his house, it's so so and so. Is that the measure of a, a, a pastor? This day they have put something. Prosperity is all people shout about. It's good to be prosperous. Even the Bible says it. But what is the real deal of a Christian? What is the number one thing of a Christian? The number one thing for a Christian is called salvation. How you can enter into eternity when you die. How you can live with your Lord. How you can live on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, singing holy with the host of angels on the day of judgment. All the things of the world is going to go when you die. Let 
a little water. Yes. I pray you. He asked them to drink. Be to fed. come so that I can do something good for you. Be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a muzzle of bread and comfort ye your heart. After that, ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah. And yes, that's, that's, the, that's the wife of Abraham. Wanted to tell her that this is what is happening. Go ahead, man. And said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. Thank you, man. You can see that. The whole story is all about being nice. I'm just going to summarize it. Be nice to people. Can you go to the seven lesson quickly? Let brother not continue. Yes. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Listen to this part of the witness. What is that? For thereby some have entertained angels on a way. Thank you. You can see that. There was a time I was there, I told her about the story of a lady who, who she was going to church. Things were not going on right with her. She kept praying and praying to the Lord. Lord, why has that? It's like, Lord, you have forsaken me. So the villain he got in a dream, the Lord told him, look at it. I will come and visit you. And when I come and visit you, I will sit down in the house, I will dine and eat with you. I will do things right with you. And your problem, you can tell me, then we can settle it, and I'll be able to get you out of your problem. So that day, with the appointed day, she was broke, she didn't have money. The little money she had, she went to the grocery store. She wanted to buy something to prepare for the Lord, the coming of the Lord. When she went on her way back home, she had a bag with her. She saw two people, two old people, two elderly people. They were filthy, smelling, in rats. You can see that they were hungry. They haven't had a decent meal in weeks. So they said, please give us food. Please give us the, this. Oh, we saw you coming out of the grocery store. Can you please give us food? She looked around. She said, oh, I don't have much. But she, she, was, she started walking uh, over her knees. Started going on her way. She had pity on them. Well, because she didn't have enough, she decided not to give them. But after one, two, three steps, you see, the Lord can talk to you. The Spirit of the Lord came into her. So she looked at it and she said, okay, let me give them half of these things I have. So as she, as she turned around, put her back down, to open it to give them what they want, they put their hand in it with those dirty hands, so she couldn't take the things again. She was so mad, she looked at it and said, what is this? Now, uh, uh, the Lord is coming to me, what can I give to the Lord? I have given this thing to these people. So she just left it for them and went home, dejected. Not in a good mood. She got back home, she was thinking, what can I do? Of all the days I've been suffering, this might be my breakthrough. And look at what happened. As she sat down, she went into a trance. The Lord appeared unto her. The Lord asked her, what do you want me to do for you, my dear? She said, oh my Lord, you said you were going to visit me. The Lord said, I already visited you. He said, no. I said, yes, I did. You see those two people you saw in the alley there? That was me. You don't have to know me. That is what the Lord said. You don't have to know me to do me good. If he said, if you have done it, the, the some people saw it was helping some people. He said, oh, thank you. They said, oh, Lord, we didn't do you anything. He said, as you have done it unto one of these people, you have done it unto me. So the Lord told me, told her, what do you want me to do for you? She said, okay, Lord, I want to be famous, I want to be this. The Lord said, as you have spoken, I have blessed those words and shall so. She became a good person. She became rich by doing good. 
What does it profit you to help him? That's why he said some people have entertained strangers. Something happened to me. I'm just going to give you this briefly. That was on the um, Easter last year. I was conducting the service. And I was a little bit sick before that. But because the service of Easter was given to me, I decided this is I mean, a, a, a good thing to have nominated me to conduct the service on an Easter day. So I took over and decided to do the service. Halfway during the service, the sickness was so hard. All I was waiting for is time for, I can't leave that place as the service conducted. <coughs> All I was praying is that when is the preaching going to come? I was not only I prayed for long, but I was cutting it short so that the whole thing can come up quick. As soon as the shepherd was preaching that day, as soon as he got up when he started, I just went out. As I was going outside, my car normally parked my car outside. I saw the chairman and the wife who were coming out of their car. I said, Madam, um, my chairman, I can barely walk to my car right now. Can you do me a favor? Can you let me sit down and just to have fresh air? He said, sure. I sat down. My mother over there looked at me. She said, what's the problem, sir? I said, I'm just feeling sick. She decided to stay with me. She was testing me, she was pulling my hand, doing this. Just before I knew this must be a nurse. She was telling me, she started asking me questions. Have you eaten today? Have you done this? Have you done that, this and this? Instead of her coming into the church, some of you will say, oh, I came into the church instead of helping a fellow human being. She stood there with me. At a point in time, she said, I know what the problem is, sir. I'm going to give you something to eat. I didn't feel like it. All that time she was there with me, the service was going on. What, what makes my, my, the funny thing is that after she, she said, I'm going to find something for you to eat. Have you eaten today? I said, no. She went, unfortunately, they brought food that day. She gave it to me. I was sitting in the car. She gave it to me. I said, no, madam. She said, you have to eat. The next moment she said that she raised her voice. I looked at her. The next thing I saw, she was tearing the food to put it to my mouth. I said, here comes Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at her. I was like, okay, ma. She was ready to put it. She was tearing the food. She was ready to put it in my mouth and eat it. I said, okay. I started, she was staying with me. After eating one spoon, two, three, I thought this should be enough because I didn't feel like I was even forcing myself to eat it. So I just wanted to put the food down. By the time I turned around to look, she was standing right there beside me. I said, okay, let me continue eating then. So I started eating. The husband came and checked on me. So I put a daughter came and checked on me. Few minutes later, Tell you the truth, it was like she, she put something in that food. I was, I was almost asking her, what medication did you put in that food? As soon as I finished that food, 15 minutes later, I gained my health back. My strength came back right away. Isn't that what the Lord wants us to do? Isn't that what the Lord wants us to do? You remember the story of uh, the Good Samaritan. There was somebody on the floor. They were going. They said, people were passing by. Oh, I'm not going to share you. This one was going. Even the prophet, the priests passed by. Did not help. But the Samaritan, who was going, took the guy, took him to an a hospital or something like that. 
She, the diamond said, I want you to treat you. If there's not enough money, when I come back, I will pay you. What do you want from the Lord? Is that not the blessing we ask him for? If you do that kind of a thing, will the Lord not continue to bless you? Let me, let me give you this. Because you have said it before. Because you come to church, you are a celestial member, you are this, you have been baptized, you have been this. Yeah, that does not yeah, qualify yeah, you into the kingdom of God. Yeah, and you've been given, um, like me, you've been given a name, and this and that. You, when you 